Oh, let's see if anybody else join us and then we go get started. <sighs> Jakira, is Tavion there today? Keep it in the chat box. Okay. All right, we're gonna take one more minute and then. All right, well, we're going to go on and get started. All right, go ahead and find this page in your binder. Looks like that. Oh, is it? Hmm. Right here. Find this page in your binder. All right, uh, Daria, read this. If you're near. Read starting with a class. Daria, can you hear me? Can you read this? I still got to find the page real quick. Okay. What page is it? Uh, June. Just like what's on the screen. Okay. Oh, <laughs> 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 
All right, while you find it, I'm going to go on and read it. It says, a class has 500 tickets to sell for the fun fair. Some tickets are sold during the first week. After the first week, the class has 278 tickets left. How many tickets does the class sell during the first week? So if we're trying to figure out how many they sold, should we add or should we subtract? What do you think, Jakaira? I started out with 500 tickets, but now I only have 278 tickets. Should I add or should I subtract? All right, well, we should subtract. So we're gonna go ahead and set up on a piece of paper. Well, it's a big area right here that says um, that we can subtract with. Let's go ahead and do 500 minus 278. Mm -hmm. Now, since we haven't done one like this in a while, I'm also going to set up my HTO chart and draw my chip model. And since our top number is 500, I'm going to draw five chips to represent 500. <clears throat> now, as always, we need to start in our ones place, but I can't take, I can't subtract zero minus eight. So Daria, where should I go? Okay, just flip over a blank piece of paper and we can do it like this. Okay. Yeah, just flip over a piece of paper in your binder and you can just do it on the back. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so we see that we can't do zero minus eight. So if we go to our tens place, we also see that we can't do zero minus seven. So we should go to the hundreds place and unbundle a hundred for 10 tens. But remember, we need some ones. So we need to unbundle a 10 and trade it for 10 ones. Now we're able to subtract. This zero becomes a 10. This zero becomes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And this five is now a four. Now we're ready to subtract. We need to subtract 10 minus eight, 10 minus one, five, six, seven, eight, and we'll get two. We could also scratch out and we'll have two left. Then we need to do nine minus seven. So we need to scratch seven out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let me put this two right here. We also have two again. And then we need to do four minus two. So scratch out two hundreds and once again, we have two. So that means that the class um, sold 222 tickets in the first 
week. All right, let's keep going. I like to check our answer and we got 222. All right, go to the page that looks like this. This is the page that you're going to uh, complete. Dario, try to find this page. The first one says, which equation could you use to check if the subtraction equation is correct? So, I get it. <clears throat> so our subtraction problem is 473 minus 187 equals 286. And we're trying to figure out which one of these could help us solve uh, to make sure that our answer is correct. Remember that whenever we want to know if an answer is right, we can go back and add them. Well, we already know we can use process of elimination to kind of help us eliminate some of the stuff we know isn't right. Like the answer nowhere tells us that 759 is in there. So anything that has 759, we can automatically cross out. <clears throat> we also see that the 473 and 187 is in there. So we can cross this one out too. So now we're left with the fact families, kind of how we talked about the other day. So let's bubble in A, bubble in C, and bubble in D. You need help, Daria? I can't find this page either. Okay. Just write on the back of a piece of paper. And you'll just take a picture of that. All right, now we're gonna move down to number five. Because we need to also get to some science. Now they want you to subtract 800 minus 426. Once again, if you need to draw the chip model, ooh, my two is ugly. I'm gonna go ahead and let you solve this one and then this will be what you need to take a picture of.
You need him, Daria? Okay, unmute yourself. Okay. So we're doing 800 minus 100, uh, 400. Okay, can we do zero minus six? Mm, yeah. Okay, mm. hold on, no fingers. Can you do zero minus six? No. No, and we also can't do zero minus two. So let's borrow a hundred. Cross out your eight, and what will it become? So I have eight hundred. And I take a hundred away. How many do I have now? Seven. 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 What does this zero become? I just gave it ten, ten. So a this ten. Is what? Ten. Ten. But I still need to borrow. So I need to scratch this ten out and borrow a ten. How many do I have now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. How I many do I have? Nine. And this zero is now a 10. So now you need to subtract 10 minus six, nine minus two, and seven minus four. Oh, so you said six. Oh, six. Okay. Take a 10, I mean, yeah, take a 100 and put it in the 10. Yeah, so 10 minus six, uh, so, solve 10 minus six. What is 10 minus Four. six? Four. Four. And then we need to do nine minus two. Nine minus two. Mm -hmm. The four under the six. Do nine minus nine two. Minus. Yeah, put the four underneath the six. Seven. Six. Good. Seven. And then do seven minus four. Three. Yep. So our answer is. We did not. Is seventy four. Good. All right, the last thing we're going to do. Can you go to the last one? Hold on. Oh, the last one. Oh, that's the one we just did. So, so you, it would be D374. I mean, the top one to the top one. Oh, don't worry about that one. All right, the last thing that we're going to do is just kind of go over the landforms that we learned about yesterday. So landforms can just be all kinds of things, uh, like a canyon, a mountain, a river. All of that is just what, like the earth just forms over time, either through rain, through snow, and we call that a landform. 
now. We need to watch. Oh, let me stop sharing real quick. Oh, I keep doing the same thing. Hmm, you need some, Dario? Sand is a time capsule. Every grain tells a story. Sand can be anything that's been worn down until it's reduced to some tiny essential fragment of what it once was. It's a technical term. Bigger than sand, that's gravel. Smaller, silt. Go to beaches across the world and you find sand that looks completely different. If you could take a single grain of sand from every beach, you would have a history of the world pinched between two fingers. A hundred years ago, a pebble chipped off a slab of granite in the Sierra Mountains. It was dragged by the current of the Sacramento River through the Delta, out the Golden Gate, and onto the beaches of San Francisco. Sometimes sand is a graveyard full of dead bodies. This is the shell of a tiny foram, a single-celled organism whose skeletons litter the bottom of the ocean. This sand, almost entirely coral. This one, shards of lava from a Hawaiian volcano. This tiny nugget of quartz tumbled down the waterways of Appalachia, all the way to the beaches of Florida. By the time it got there, it had worn down to the consistency of sugar. Time takes a big thing and makes it small. But sometimes the opposite can happen. Behold Uid, the only sand that accretes rather than erodes. Think snowball effect. A tiny speck of brine shrimp poop is tossed and turned on the ocean floor, accumulating minerals like calcium until it's a grain of sand the size of a pin tip. Sand is a snapshot in time, a stopping point between the very big and the very small, the landlocked and the oceanic. Okay, hold on, let me stop this. All right, Dario, take a picture of what you um, did today. 